From the home of the Greensboro Grasshoppers, this is Carolina Disco Turkeys Baseball on the Carolina Disco Turkey YouTube channel. Brett Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck from First National Bank Field in the gate city of downtown Greensboro. Graham, as we get into the game day gobble, we take a look back to Tuesday night. A great win in Martinsville and then last night a win in the exhibition against the Mount Area Senior Legion 15-4. But let's go back to Tuesday night. That might be, might be more telling. Tuesday night, five of eight runs were scored without a base hit being recorded. Two wild pitches, a pass ball, a bases loaded walk, and a sack fly. Drove home five of the eight runs. But the most important thing for me has been the oncoming of Jeffrey Davis, who the past two nights has homered. And Davis is a guy that all year long he's been hitting the ball hard when he's got the chance to. And now that he's seeing a bit more playing time, he's showing what he can do two straight games with the dinger, as you said, and he's looking to make it three tonight here at First National Bank Field. Some lineup decisions for Kirk Cabana as Tuesday night in Martinsville, the extra hitter spot, both teams batted 10 men, the extra hitter spot, a combined four for four. Caleb Smith went two for two with a pair of singles. Jeffrey Davis with a single and then the home run in the top half of the ninth that made it an eight to two ball game. And great pitching in that one from Chase Lockler as well. The starting pitching, it seems, has really come on of late. Chase Lockler being the best among that group in the, in the handful of starts he's had, he's looked exceptional. And Lockler's a guy that all year long has looked decent at worst, and he's embracing it even more so now. And we're gonna take a quick break as we're getting into this game sooner than we thought we would for the National Anthem. Back here at First National Bank Field in Greensboro. It's time for your starting lineups presented by Foothills Brewing, Foothills Great Craft Beer and Coffee, and in their three triad locations. Find out more at foothillsbrewing.com. Since this game is getting started earlier than we were told and earlier than we anticipated, we don't have the lineups for you yet. We'll get those as soon as we can, Graham. But uh, what, what are we looking for tonight here out of both club ball clubs? Keys to the game tonight. Well, keys to the game, one thing that we've seen lately is the team being able to manufacture runs and part of the part of that is the long ball as we've seen come on lately Jeff Davis a big part of that and so that's going to be one of my keys is the long ball I think if the disco turkeys can hit one out of the yard here this afternoon evening they'll be in good shape to defeat the Monarchs tonight another one of those is going to be a clean defensive game the last couple of losses that Carolina's had they've made a slew of errors if they want to stay in the win column with their second consecutive true win then they're going to need to play clean defensively and player to watch tonight it's got to be Deion Tubbs doesn't it yeah he, he's always a candidate for that and tonight is no uh, no difference absolutely and he's in the on deck circle with some flashy new wood a pink bat it's not Mother's Day but never a bad time to break out the pink wood I a wonderful right sight here tonight Beautiful ballpark here in downtown Greensboro. The Disco Turkey branding on the video board. I tell you what, this is a cool experience for us and for these guys as well to get to come out here and play in another high quality minor league ballpark. And as we as we said, we don't know exactly what the lineups look like tonight, but 
We can tell you for sure it looks like it's going to be Dion Tubbs, Kix Farrell, and Austin St. Laurent batting one, two, three. And it appears that Hayden Setzer is warming up as the starting pitcher in the Carolina bullpen with Patrick Usher, the pair in his, in his battery tandem. And now in steps Dion Tubbs to get this one started. It does look like our old friend Devin Bartley is behind the plate. Yeah, he missed the last game between these two teams. That was a 12 to eight win for the Greensboro Monarchs that only got through the seventh as inclement weather cut that one short in Winston-Salem. That might be the darkest black cloud I've, I've ever, ever seen in my seen. life. We caught it on the camera at the very end of the game. Go back and watch that one if that you was want an, That was an intimidating cloud, not gonna lie. Here's the first pitch of the evening. It's outside, ball one to De Nope, never mind. Strike one to Dion. Looked outside from here. We got a really good angle here from behind home plate. Big thanks to everyone involved with the Greensboro Grasshoppers for setting this up for us as that misses high ball one. One and one the count. Tubbs let off the game in Martinsville Tuesday night for a single. Looking to duplicate that here tonight. Takes one in the dirt, two and one. Dion ahead in the count. We know he likes to be aggressive in those situations. Let's see what happens here. 2-1. He's aggressive, but he swings and misses 2-2. Two -two. Like he pulled the string right there with the off speed. Two and two the count. To the Disco Turkey leadoff man. On the way. In the dirt, full count. It's a good take. 2-2 two -two count a lot of times. You're just looking to stay alive. But Dion, conscious enough, he, he's been disciplined all year long. We've never seen him chase the pitches like that. And a status quo for number three in the box. Farrell awaits on deck. And Dion awaits the 3-2. Patty McGonigal, the starter for Greensboro, by the way, on the mound. He has been a horse for them so far. And Dion whacks it out to center field. This has got some carry to it but it's gonna die a few feet short of the warning track for a loud out number one. Justin Guy making that catch. Good job to track that one and a very loud out number one. Patty McGonigal, a guy that Carolina knows well. This will be the third straight matchup between these two ball clubs that McGonigal has been the starter for Greensboro and kicks Farrell also using the pink bat tonight. And those are two guys that know each other pretty well. They're in trouble if that bat breaks, I can tell you that. First pitch to Farrell misses down on the way, ball one. Nobody on, one out, and Farrell takes strike one. Right on the outside black. St. Laurent on deck. 1-1 one, one on the way to Farrell. Just misses, 2-1. and one. Man, that would look really good from here. Farrell's lucky that he's ahead in the count right now. Farrell had two pretty much unassisted double plays the other night. He speared a line drive at third, stepped on the bag, and threw back to first to double off the runner in Martinsville. As he pops that one foul back to even the count at two and two. That was in the second inning, in the fifth inning of Tuesday night's game against the Ponies. Farrell snagged another ground ball at third, stepped on the bag, and with the bases loaded, Stepped on the bag at third and had time to throw home and get the out at the plate. And he smacks that into center field. Guy's going to let it fall in front of him for a base hit. It's a good way to start your afternoon, evening if you're Kicks Farrell. He's kind of cooled down a little bit after a really hot start to his stint with the Disco Turkeys. He was batting around 400 for a while. He's cooled off since then, as I said, but still one of the best players hitting-wise on this team as St. Laurent steps into the box and... Conklin comes to the on-deck circle. Good crowd here at First National Bank Field, still filing in. 
on an early evening start here in the Gate City. Here's the first pitch to St. Laurent on the outside corner, strike one. St. Laurent two for four the other night in Martinsville. Oh one, big rip, but he didn't get it, it's 0-2. We said Conklin on deck. Farrell's lead off of first medium depth. There he goes. St. Laurent takes low in the dirt. The throw down is not in time. And chalk up another stolen base for Kicks Farrell. That's not what he's been known for this year, but he's a fast guy as pretty much everybody that's been on the middle infield at, at any point this year is. And Farrell no exception. And he's an aggressive base runner for that somebody he is. that's... He's not the fastest guy on the team, but he can hurt you if he wants to, just like that. One, two. St. Laurent out to left. Got under it, though. Play to be made out there, and there's two down. Man, oh, man, that one sounded like it was going a long way off the bat. And as he said, just barely got under it a little bit. If he squares that one up just a little bit more and evens out the launch on it, might be going out towards that patio area. Park that plays pretty even though, 327 down the right field line, 325 down the left field line, 362 and 365 to left center and right center respectively, and an even 400 to dead center. Here's Conklin with Farrell at second and two down. Takes a breaky ball that's in there, strike one. And this is good stuff for McGonigal right off the bat. If he keeps pitching like this, it's gonna be tough for Carolina. Jeffrey Davis is on deck. Deserve it of batting fifth after the past two nights he's had. Conklin takes in the dirt ball one. Farrell bluffed the go to third, but as Devin Bartley is prone to do, does a good job popping out of the crouch and getting a handle on it before Farrell can get 90 feet further. And as you said, these two teams know each other very well at this point, and Kicks knows this team better than pretty much anybody on the Disco Turkeys in that respect anyway. So Absolutely. He knows Bartley as not one to be trifled with on the base paths. He got, he got lucky that he got second base, honestly. Farrell's dancing out there, the one one. Conklin swings and misses now, one and two. Be a big two out hit if he can get it here and drive kicks home. One, two from McGonigal. Conklin takes high, count even, two, two. Uh, despite the fact that you're not getting much done in terms of traffic on the base pass, you just had the one base runner getting the pitch count up early. Two, two to Conklin. Out and away on the breaky ball that had too much bite to it, and it's a full count now. Now, despite the fact that this is not your typical 3-2-2 out situation, I would be surprised if Kicks isn't running on this pitch. But he's being held on, so that might change. 3-2. Conklin rips it foul off the facing of the third base dugout. Another full count offering coming to Conklin. Takes outside, ball four, and it's a two out walk. What a plate appearance from Conklin right there. That's good stuff from your cleanup hitter, not being too aggressive. You know that he's got that power that he can hurt you with, but helps just as much when you can get on base with two outs, no matter how it happens. In steps Jeffrey Davis, and if he can get on, Caleb Smith, the man he replaced Tuesday night in the extra hitter spot, is on deck.
Davis looking to find some more pop that he's had the past couple of nights, and he swung for the fences right there, but pulled off of it and nearly pulled his batting helmet off in the process, 0-1. Man, he's looking to keep that hot streak alive with one swing of the bat. First pitch he saw was trying to put it in those umbrellas over there in left field. Kicks off for third, it's a double steal. The throw down to second is high. The pitch missed for ball one, and now two guys in scoring position as they'll both be credited with a stolen base. The double steal is something that we haven't seen a whole lot from Carolina this year, but when we have seen it, it's worked to perfection. That's no exception right there. 1-1 one, one count with two in scoring position. Davis, big rip at the fastball, but he's behind it, one and two. It's a pretty big situation right off the hop here. Pun intended? Very much pun intended, considering the ballpark. I didn't even realize I made the pun. <laughs> so pun unintended, I guess. When I make puns, they're usually on purpose. That time it wasn't. One, two. Davis swings and misses strike three, and McGonigal's able to tightrope out of the jam. Carolina strands two. Greensboro coming to bat after this. Back here at First National Bank Field in the downtown, the Gate City, downtown Greensboro. Brett Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck. Justin Guy, the center fielder for the Monarchs, steps in to lead things off. And he takes strike one from Hayden Setzer, the big lefty on the mound. We'll get you the defensive alignment for Carolina in just a moment. It's not what you would typically imagine. 0-1 okay, coming that from Setzer. Up and away, ball one. From left to right on the infield, Austin St. Laurent at third. Caleb Smith back at shortstop, his old infield spot, as you well know. Graham kicks Farrell at second, Bryson Bever at first. That just misses, two and one. Outfield left to right, Jeffrey Davis, Deion Tubbs, and Logan Conklin is in right field tonight. There's another abnormality. And then the battery of Setzer and Patrick Usher behind the plate. Outside now, and Setzer to the first batter of the ball game has a 3-1 count. It's not the way you want to start this one. The game against the High Toms last Monday, throwing strikes was a big issue for Carolina. 
3-1, swung on and missed. He came right after him in a hitter's count, and Guy couldn't catch up to the heater. I love when pitchers challenge batters and hitters counts like that. 3-1, you know the hitter's sitting dead red on a fastball. You give it to them, they can't beat it. Full count pitch. Guy fights it off, up off the facing of the skyboxes here. We're going to have to watch out for that here, aren't we? Yeah, we might have to. Who's ducking in front of who is the question. You and I both know that you'll be the one ducking behind me. Don't even put more, it like more that. More than likely, I'll use you as a human shield. 3-2. Yep, Guy swings and misses on a breaking ball, and that's out number one. There's that big breaking ball from Setzer that he really had work in his last start at home. Bender looks good early on tonight here as well. It's a beautiful sequence from Setzer to come with that heater on 3-1 and then full count to come back at him after the foul ball with the off speed. Great stuff for number eight on the mound and a good way to battle back into that count. Isaiah Rem in the box now for Greensboro. And Rem will take in the dirt. I believe ball one. They haven't changed it on the scoreboard yet. It was ball one. It got away from Usher behind the dish. And Devin Bartley is on deck. And that's in there, strike one, and Setzer's back in the count. One and one, the count. Ram held up, two and one. Tempting, tailing away lefty on lefty, though. Two one from Setzer. Outside, three and one now. Oh, two batters and two three ball counts. Setzer was able to battle back against Guy. And Rem's another guy that can grind out some ABs. So we'll see if Setzer can battle back in the count here. Three one on the way. Inside ball four, and it's a one out walk to the speedster Isaiah Rem. Man, that one hurts, doesn't it? You miss outside on the first three, and then you come back in. I like the thought process. Yeah, on that I, I like changing the uh, changing the angle there. Just didn't work out. So now Bartley steps in. Rem takes his lead off first, stays put for the moment, and that one is poured in down the middle. Strike one to Bartley. And do not be at all surprised if Rem takes off as soon as he can. He's already stretching out that lead, and Setzer realizes that and throws back to first to keep him honest. That's some awareness right there. From me or him or both? Uh, actually, both. I was more talking about Rem, but you know what? It's okay. I'll give you the credit. <laughs> 0-1 pitch coming. Rem takes a slight secondary lead. The breaking ball misses outside. Count even one and one. And another throw over. Rem back in easily. Already up to 14 pitches through just a third of an inning. That's what happens when the first two batters of the ball game get the three ball counts. 1-1 to Bartley. There goes Ram. Bartley hits it in the air down the right side. Out of play. Foul towards the playground area. And the hit and run was on, but not able to be executed by Bartley. So Ram will have to retreat to first. A break for Carolinas if that ball gets down the right field line. Rem is at least at third. At the very least. One two pitch and that looked like a bit of a pitch out right there as Usher pops out and takes a look down to first count even two and two. You don't see pitch outs that often anymore and at any level of baseball kind of falling by the wayside. Two two. Bartley into deep 
right center field. That's going to get down. Rem's going to easily get to third, and it's runners at the corners now with one out. It's a great piece of hitting from Bartley. Carolina caught a break that they didn't have to see him in the last contest against the Monarchs. Couldn't make anything of it, though. And already back to his old ways against Carolina in a two-strike count with that big hit. And in steps Isaiah Hairston, the big first baseman. Take strike one from Setzer. Off is Bartley for second. The throw is behind the batter. And Usher does a tremendous job of getting to that before Rem can make a break for the plate. The pitch went behind Hairston. Didn't quite hit him. It looked like it might have clipped the back of the jersey. Instead, he was able to lean out of the way. But now you got two runners in scoring position, though. Yeah, that's the bad news. Now the double play becomes null. Now you got to pitch for the K. Count even 1-1 one, one to Hairston. Hairston on the ground, left side, foul. Good approach trying to go the other way. Just couldn't keep it fair. One ball, two strike count with two on and one out. To the Monarch Slugger. One, two. On the ground, back to the mound. Going to be a tough play. Setzer flipped to the plate. They got him. Great awareness by Setzer on the swinging bunt to bolt off the bump. Field the ball cleanly and flip to the plate, and Rem didn't even bother to slide. He was toast. Man, that was a... Terrible, terrible read from Rim. He was going no, on contact no matter what, and you could tell. He was, a, that was the exact right term for it. He was absolutely toast at the plate. Now Colin Fowler will stand in. The right fielder for Greensboro tonight. Take strike one. That's outside, count even now, one and one. Runners still at the corners though. After the fielder's choice, it's a one-two count now. Already 24 pitches for Setzer. And this could be the last one right here. One, two. Oh, thought it was on the corner. And they appeal down to make sure there was no swing from Fowler. It's a 2-2 two -two count. And now Setzer has matched his opposite number, McGonigal, in pitches now with 25 in the first inning. Eli Willen on deck. 2-2 from Setzer. Inside, and the plot thickens now as the count goes full with runners at the corners and two down in the scoreless ball game. Yep, so Harrison's going to be running on the pitch now. Bartley will be running on contact. Setzer from the stretch. Big 3-2 pitch coming on the ground. Foul behind the plate, and Fowler will stay alive. Another full count pitch coming. Swing and a miss, he got him. So just like his opposite number did in the top half of the inning, Hayden sets her Houdini's his way out of a two-runner jam 
and we're scoreless after one in the Gate City. Back here at First National Bank Field in downtown Greensboro. Brett Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck. Caleb Smith in to lead things off for the Disco Turkeys here in their half of the second inning. And Bryson Beber coming to the on-deck circle. So he will hit second in this inning, seventh in the order. Smith takes ball one outside, first pitch. Beber's on deck, as you said. Six, seven, eight, due up. Remains to be seen if Setzer will hit for himself or not. You gotta guess that if he was going to be hitting for himself, he'd be a little bit higher up in the order. So I'd venture to guess that we're gonna see a DH tonight. Two and O oh is the count to the Carolina shortstop. Big rip at the two O, oh, but he didn't get it two and one. Two one on the way from McGonagall. Smith out to right center. And Fowler's under it to make the play in the gap for out number one. And in steps Beber now. Case and Haggard on deck. I would presume from what we saw in the defensive alignment. Yeah, it looks like Haggard's DH in the night. As Beber takes ball one. Interesting, the last two times Setzer has started, he's not able to hit for himself, but that might be to protect him more than anything else after the injury he had earlier on in the year as Beber takes a hack and a half at the 1-0, but can't catch up to it, 1-1. 1-1 on the way. Beber swings and misses at a pitch down of the way, and he's behind in the count now, 1-2. And, and Beber had a, had a big game against the Monarchs in the last game that we were both there for. He went two for three before getting pulled. 1-2. On the outside corner, strike three. Boy, that was a good frame from Bartley as well, and there's two down. Yep, because that pitch was not as close as it ended up being due to the frame from Bartley. 
That kid can play some catcher, I'm telling you. And Patrick Usher in the on-deck circle as Kaysen Hager comes up, so that'll line out the first nine, at least, for Carolina. Remains to be seen if we'll have an extra hitter tonight or not. As was the case Tuesday night in Martinsville. And we may not know that until after this inning if Kaysen Haggard can't reach. He's ahead in the count 1-0, though. Here it comes. Haggard out into the gap in left center. That is going to get down and get past Guy. Haggard's on his horse heading for second. He's going to be in there safely with a two-out double. Man, oh, man, that's the hardest contact I've seen Casey Haggard I was Haggard getting ready to say that might be long. the most solid ball I've seen him hit all summer. No doubt about it. What a spot for that hit from Haggard. A big spot with two down. And now Usher to the plate. No one in the on-deck circle yet. If it's not Deion Tubbs, that means we have an extra hitter tonight. No Nick Macadon in the lineup tonight, so that is a bit of an oddity. Remains to be seen if he is in that 10th spot or not. As much of a mainstay as he's been. First pitch to Usher is a swing and a miss for strike one. Yeah, he pulled off on that one. He ended up stepping out a little bit. Didn't keep his head down on that one. Stepped in the bucket, as they say. Behind in the count, 0-1, with Haggard at second and two down. That misses inside, one and one. Another big spot here. Don't want to strand three through two innings, 1-1. One, one. Usher on the ground towards third. It takes a nasty hop. The throw from across the diamond is in time. And a fine play over there at the hot corner to retire the side. Good Carol stuff from Eli Willen. Oh, my goodness. Carolina does end up stranding two through three through the first two innings. Sets her back to the bump after this. Back here for the bottom half of the second inning at First National Bank Field in downtown Greensboro. Eli Willen, who made the play at third base to end the top half of the inning, leads off the bottom half. First pitch from Setzer, and Willen hits that well into the gap in right center. It's going to fall in a base hit. Dion bobbles it a little bit, and that will allow Willen to get into second base standing with a leadoff double. And that was solid contact, wasn't it? Oh, my goodness. 
First pitch dazzling, swinging, too. First pitch swinging and a dazzling play to end the last half inning. Comes back out with a leadoff double to start the bottom half. Have an inning, Eli Willen. And in steps Alejandro Rodriguez now. He takes strike one right down the middle. Rodriguez had that phenomenal first game against the Disco Turkeys, and then since then, at least against Carolina, he's kind of tailed off. Rodriguez in left field tonight. 0-1. Big rip at that one, but he didn't get it, and then sets her quickly ahead in the count on him, 0-2. Bank Starbuck, the second baseman on deck. Here comes the 0-2. Misses high and away, ball one, good waste pitch. And Usher was set up not quite that far outside, but that was certainly the idea behind it. Yep, trying to get him to chase, but Rodriguez, very disciplined, holds off. Here comes the one two with Willen dancing at second. Inside and off the shin guard of Usher. He can't find it. And Willen's going to come to the plate. The throw. They got him. Talk about a play that turned from disastrous to clutch in a matter of seconds. Usher had no idea where the ball went off his shin guard and off the backstop. Found it. Willen. Bolted for the plate, knowing Usher had no idea where the ball was. Usher found it, popped up and threw him out at the plate. And now Pella Stokes is going to have a conference with Rodriguez and her home plate umpire who had a conference with the base umpire. Well, I'll tell you something, Brett. There is no need for there to be a conference of any sort right he here. He was out. The only thing that you could potentially argue is that Setzer blocked the plate. That is literally the only thing that could be of circumstance here because Eli Willen was out by a mile at home plate. Clearly out, the throw beat him and everything, but the only thing that you could maybe have an issue with is the foot placement of Hayden Setzer. 2-2 two -two pitch, high, ball three. Mm, didn't miss by a whole lot though. That was the classic no, 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 yes play. Which you don't hear as often in baseball as you do in other sports, specifically football. 3-2. High and away, ball four. So it's a one-out walk now to Rodriguez. It's a whole lot better than there being runners on first and second with nobody out, though. I'll tell you that right now. And that'll bring in Starbuck. With one down in the inning. And Brandon, excuse me, Brandon McMillian is on deck. Starbuck on the ground to second. This could be two, hit too slowly to get two. And it took a lot just to get the one out. A good play by Farrell to flip on to Smith to get the force at second for out number two. And here in steps Brandon McMillan, the DH. As Starbuck grounds into the 4-6 fielder's choice. Big rip at that one, and he didn't get it. The setzer came right after him, 0-1. Came right after a slugger that's hitting in the nine spot. Man, that heater has been working for setzer and as Justin Guy has stepped into the on-deck circle, that means that there is no extra hitter for Greensboro, so no reason to think there'd be one for Carolina either. Big rip again, and he's behind it once again, 0-2. And, and 0-2 pitch on the way. Swung on and missed. Setzer got him. 
Back-to-back -back innings, he's recorded the final out with a swinging K, and that'll end the inning. To the top half of the third we go from downtown Greensboro, still scoreless. Looking for an opportunity to promote your local business? Contact us today to become a sponsor of the Carolina Disco Turkeys. Opportunity started just $100 per season. To learn more, message sponsorships at discoturkeys.com. That's sponsorships at discoturkeys.com. As Dion Tubbs promptly lines one out to left field, but unfortunately for him, right at Alejandro Rodriguez, and it's a quick out number one to start the third inning. Man, he didn't give you a whole lot of time to get that through that read at all, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Breathing heavy. I announced hockey. I should be able to have the lung capacity, you would think. You would think. So officially no extra hitter for Carolina. And Farrell will step in with quickly one down. And that's in there, strike one. Here comes the 0-1 to Farrell. Hard hit on the ground to third. Going to be a tough play. The throw in time. Good play by Willen right there. Two down. And a, and a great play as well from Harrison at first base to pick Good that pick. one up out of the dirt. It looked to be hit a lot harder than it was, but it was spanked into the ground and... Got stuck on a roll on the infield grass. Willen made a good play to charge it, field it with the glove hand, and throw on for the out. I think that's the first time I've ever heard anybody refer to a baseball as getting spanked. Don't oh, stamp that one, everybody. Trust me, if a home run gets hit, I'll have to say it. Go ahead. First pitch to St. Laurent is well hit down the left field line, but foul. It's only one. Man, if he squares that one up a little bit more, you might have had your opportunity right there. I might there. have had my <laughs> opportunity right there. Exit Velo on that one was way up there. Just about had right a there. home run his first time up. Just barely missed it. Got under it. Didn't get under that one, though. It's a custom of solid line drives down the left field line, except this time he didn't break his bat and was not ripped of an extra base hit. Oh, man, don't even get me started on that. Uh, I left that in last week. Breaky ball misses up and away, one and one. We're done with that. We did not need to mention that again. Down and in, two and one now to St. Laurent. I don't think I have ever been so close to absolutely losing it over a play call. <laughs> that, that, was, that was atrocious. You and me both. 2-1. Big rip at the 2-1, but he's behind it. 2-2. Two two. St. Laurent takes inside on the 2-2, and he's worked it full. Conklin stands on deck if he could find a way to reach here with two down. Full count pitch from McGonigal on the way. St. Laurent takes inside, ball four, and it's a two-out walk to the Carolina third baseman tonight.
second walk issued by McGonigal. He's allowed four base runners so far through two and two thirds. It's not bad numbers out there. Just the one hit and then the two walks. Two hits. Two hits, excuse me, and then the two walk. The West Texas A&M products with one each. Here's Conklin. We had the other walk and takes out side ball one. Halfway to 100 pitches with this offering is McGonigal. 1 0. Conklin takes inside half in there, strike one. That's a pretty solid take, though. That's a rollover ground out if he takes a hack at it. Yep, especially with a runner on first. You got the easy play either way, first or second. Definitely not going to be able to do anything with that. Guy in center is shading towards left center. And now a throw back to first. There's that was a, a, it was a really good pickoff move. That was a very quick pickoff. but I blinked and the ball was already at first base. I was too busy worrying about where Guy was shading and then the ball was at first base. Anyways, there's a lot of room in the gap in right center. A lot. Off goes St. Laurent for second. Pitch is high. The throw down and they got him. An absolute laser beam from Bartley behind the plate. And St. Laurent caught stealing to retire the side. To the bottom half of the third we go. Still scoreless in the Gate City. Back here at First National Bank Field in downtown Greensboro. Brett Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck. Top half of the order back due up for the Monarchs to start the third inning. It'll be Justin Guy who struck out swinging to start the ball game for Greensboro. Hayden Sexer back to the bump as he misses outside ball one. Fortieth pitch of the ball game for Setzer now. One up. -oh. Guy smacks it to the right side, foul off the window of one of those sky boxes, which luckily they built those with foul balls going off them in mind, and it ricochets its way back into the crowd behind the first base dugout. I don't know how you can build box seats these days without having foul balls in mind. Exactly. And those are some pretty nice box seats up there. That's on the inside corner. Good spot with the fastball right there, one and two. I'd venture to say that we got the best seat in the house, though. I'll, I'll say that. We do. And it's a great crowd here tonight as well, still filing in. Part of that is because the game started earlier than it was advertised. 1-2, swung on and missed. Justin Guy goes down chasing a ball at his eyes. And Setzer has retired him swinging for the second time in two at-bats. And that's out number one here in the third. 
Yep, fourth K of the evening for Setzer already through two and a third, not bad. Carolina, you're already scoreless through three, so something I like to talk about a lot. You've already guaranteed that you won't win the first third of the game, but the best you can do here is to keep Greensboro scoreless and try to stay even going into the second third of it. First pitch to Isaiah Rem, who walked and was thrown out at home plate. Back in the first inning, take strike one. 0-1 oh, to him is inside, and he held up, says our home plate umpire, 1-1. One and one. And it wasn't particularly close either. No, it was not. I saw something from John Heyman the other day, who doesn't necessarily have the best ideas. The MLB Network insiders, that's outside 2-1, and one, that it should be thought of to adopt a rule in baseball where if it's a check swing, regardless, it becomes a full swing which might be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Why Why would, that's mind boggling to me. Ram grounds that one to short, gonna be a tough play for Smith. The throw, not in time. Beber did keep his foot on the bag, but the speedy Ram is able to beat it out. Mm, that's a tough play. That, uh, that one was kind of chopped to shortstop. You, get, you gotta field it on the run and make that throw accurately. As I said, it's a tough play. I, I, I think you're going to have to charge that one as a throwing error, as much as I hate to do it to you, Caleb. But Yeah, that's a tough play, but I agree with you. Anyways, I knew I probably wasn't going to get a chance to talk to you about that other than on this air. So we'll work it in when we can. Here's the first pitch coming to Devin Bartley. And that misses low ball one. It's It's not smart in the fact that whether it's at this level or any level, guys are throwing upwards of 90 to 100 miles an hour. Well, here's the and thing. you're naturally going to flinch, whether it's that or it's a breaking ball. Okay, that is, here's what you open up the possibility of when you do that. It's going to become exactly like a quote-unquote football move. Exactly. You, 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 you're going to create a gray what, area. What qualifies as a check swing and what doesn't? There's going to be a whole lot of gray area. And that's one thing that... Baseball is different in that there is not a whole lot of gray area in baseball when it comes to the objective rules. And that's one thing that separates it from all of the other sports. So uh, I, think that, I think that's just a terrible idea in every facet of it. After a couple of pickoff moves to first, sets her back in the stretch now. That misses outside. The throw down is not in time, and Ram steals second. 2-0 is the count to Bartley. In other baseball news, we've got our first trade of deadline season. Nelson Cruz to the Tampa Bay Rays for two of their top pitching prospects, number 10 and 17 in their system. Seems like a lot for a pending free agent, but we'll see how it works out. 2-0 to Bartley, swung on and missed. Good fastball that time from Setzer to get back in the count. And the world heavily awaits our good friend Brian Coleman's take on this trade on Twitter whenever it comes. Well, I'm sure it's already there. We just can't check it on the air. I'd have to scroll pretty far for it. We'll keep you posted, folks. The world is awaiting that. 2-1. Bartley pops it up out into medium depth left center field. Davis will call off Tubbs to make the catch, and it's a sky high out number two. I'll certainly have something to say about that on my radio show this week. Shameless self-promotion. I was literally about to say the exact same thing. It's on TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. with uh, me and uh, James Wilson. Available on all podcast platforms uh, the Sunday after. I think you mean James Wilson and yourself. Well, I'm the host of that show. He hosts Debatable. the other show. Debatable. He just has better takes than I do a lot of the time. That misses outside 1-0. and Or so he will tell you. That's an objective statement. Check on the runner at second, and Setzer will step off and keep Ram honest. It seems every time the Carolina plays this Monarchs team, they're in a tight ball game, and this one's no exception. And Setzer steps off yet again. 
Carolina likes, likes to do a lot of in and out at second base when you're holding a runner on. Haven't seen Kix Farrell move over. Well, a lot of times that's the shortstop that ends up doing that as that is swung on and foul tipped by Hairston. Well, that being said, you know, so a lot of times what these guys will do is, actually, you know what, I think that might be Casey Haggard at second base. I actually, you know what Farrell, it might be? I think Kicks Farrell might be the DH. Yeah, we might have had that mixed up. We might up. have had that mixed up. They did go to the same, they do go to the same college after all, so. I guess you can forgive us on that one. They won't. That's a swing and a miss. It's a strike. It gets away from Usher. So Rim now stands 90 feet away with two down on the one-two count. After reaching on an error, stealing second, and advancing on a pass ball, that's free bases all the way around, and now you're 90 feet from scoring with two outs. But if your sets are all you got to do is get one last pitch over the plate or a swing and a miss, and you're out of this third inning with no trouble after stranding a runner in scoring position for the second time. Big one-two pitch. Just missed outside, two and two. Big spot here with Rem at third. On comes the 2-2. Hairston grounds it foul to the right side, and we stay even. Man, that, that throw from the home plate umpire to Hayden Setzer had some gas on it. Nah, that was mid-80s. He pounded that in there. It was accurate, too. It's oh, yeah. The zone. Oh, yeah. He's wearing the wrong color blue. Get on that one, Coach Kirk. 2-2. Two -two. Hairston on the ground to second. Fielded by Haggard. The throw on in time, and that will retire the side. So Setzer gets out of it, strands a runner for the third time in three innings. Greensboro has stranded four through three, and we head to the fourth when we come back. Back here at First National Bank Field in downtown Greensboro. Logan Conklin set to lead things off to somewhat continue his plate appearance from the last half inning. As St. Laurent was caught stealing to end it and Conklin takes a hack and a half at that one and fouls it back to the screen for strike one. Pitch number 53 coming from McGonigal. There's a breaking ball that didn't have much bite to it, and it misses well high for ball one. Two hits on the ledger for each side, but nothing in the score column. Conklin swings and misses as he was tied up in knots on that one. One and two.
One and two, the count to Conklin. Big swing and a miss at that one, and it's a hefty strike three and out number one here to start the fourth. As in will step Jeffrey Davis. Davis hits that in the air, out into shallow center. Ram will make the play and it's quickly out number two. And now both pitchers even in the pitch count again, but sets are doing it through three and McGonigal nearly through four now. And in steps Caleb Smith. He takes strike one right down the middle. Breaking ball that was spotted center cut but fooled Smith as the first pitch of the A-B. He took a rip at that one, got a piece of it, but tipped it into the mid of Bartley, 0-2. Man, he's having trouble catching up to the heater, isn't he? Make that adjustment, Caleb. 0-2, the count to Smith, here it comes. Takes that one high. Good take there, too, 1-2. Especially after he's behind the first two pitches. When we talk about it, a lot of times when you're behind 0-2, you start trying to think that you have to swing at everything. Good take. And that misses in the dirt now, 2-2. Two and two. Man, that's a lot of discipline on display right there from Smith. Two two. Smith fights it off foul and made solid contact to do so. No surprise there. He pulled the hands in, he just pulled them in too quick. Yeah. You gotta keep the inning alive here. You gotta get the pitch count up if absolutely nothing else. Really good crowd here tonight and it's not all just in the seats. The Bud Light grandstand down the left field line is packed on a thirsty Thursday in Greensboro as you see it there as is the lawn out there in left center. Or I should say straightaway left. 2-2, Two -two, Smith pops it up to first. Harrison will field it on a hop and take it to first. Three unassisted for out number three. We're through three and a half here at First National Bank Field in Greensboro, still scoreless.
Back here at First National Bank Field in downtown Greensboro. Brett Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck. We get set for the bottom half of the fourth inning. Still scoreless. Hayden sets her back out for his fourth inning of work. This will be pitch number 57 from him. And that's well hit by Fowler. Out to deep left at the wall. Gone. Colin Fowler, a solo shot into the Sunbrella section in straightaway left. And just like that, Greensboro's on the board. It's 1-0. Sounded good off the bat. The only question was, was it too high to get out of here? This is a major league. Come on now. I'm glad you caught the reference. And now in steps Eli Willen looking to keep the party going. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the third consecutive game where Sets has appeared on the mound that he's given up a home run. And Willen took a home run type swing at it but didn't get it. It's 0-1. So very quickly after three scoreless innings, the long ball bite sets her. A one, up and in, one and one. This will be pitch number 60 right here. Willen took a half swing at it, but really more like a three quarter swing. Rule the full swing in the eyes of our home plate umpire and anyone else, really, one and two. Man, weren't we just talking about this? Check swings. Well, if John swing. Heyman's umpiring and it's not a swing at all, outside two and two. It's also the same guy that said the Cardinals went to a casino before their COVID outbreak. He's not the smartest guy on the planet. No bias whatsoever. Two, two coming. Willen wax it over to first, and Beber makes a nice play to spear that on a short hop and take it himself for out number one. Man, that was just outside of the frame. Couldn't get the camera over there quick enough, but what a that play That was hit that too was. hard. Just an absolute hot shot, but it took a fortunate bounce for Beber to be able to track it into the glove and make that play look a whole lot easier than it really was. So that's out number one, and a good comeback out there, even though it was still solid contact. Sometimes after a home run, when you get a break like that to go your way behind you, can build that confidence back up. We'll see if it works for Setzer. Rodriguez squares to bunt, but it's right back at Setzer on the mound, who fields and throws cleanly to first for out number two. So the bunt for hit attempt from Rodriguez is thwarted. And now in steps Bank Starbucks, so two quick outs after the solo homer from Willen. Starbuck reached on that fielder's choice his last time up. And that one misses outside. Ball one. One zero -oh is outside apparently to a no. It's one of the first questionable calls I've seen tonight. That one didn't miss by a whole lot if it did at all. Look to clip the outside corner from our vantage point, but nonetheless, it's 2-0. That's definitely outside. 3-0 now to Bank Starbuck. Man, with two outs, after getting those quick two following the home run, you cannot afford to let this two-out rally get started with a base runner, especially not on four pitches. 66 pitches now for Setzer. Here comes number 67 on the 3-0, and it's a beautiful breaking ball that splits the strike zone in half, three and one. And that's a really good stuff from Setza right there. Saw the breaking ball working to perfection in the first three innings, and he's got it in his favor right now. That one looked like a wiffle ball. 3-1 outside, ball four, and it's a two-out walk to Starbuck that will bring McMillian to the plate.
McMillan struck out swinging his first time up. Back in the second inning. And that is another blitz ball type breaking ball that finds the outside corner for strike one. And the guys were actually playing wiffle ball, blitz ball out in the infield at Martinsville Speedway on the uh, team tour Tuesday afternoon. It's a lot of fun for me to be a part of as well. 0-1 pitch to McMillan's foul back, 0-2. You don't have to rub it in. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm just saying I got to drive my actual personal car on a NASCAR racetrack. Disgrace to NASCAR. Honestly, yes. <laughs> if it's not NASCAR Heat 5, I'm not good. 0-2. McMillan holds off on the slider that came down and in as Setzer tried to tie him up. A good discipline to hold off on, and then it's 1-2. and two. It's the first non-strike to McMillan and two at-bats yet. He had either swung and missed or taken for a strike on each of the first five pitches from Setzer tonight. One, two. Swing and a miss. He got him swinging on another wiffle ball breaking ball. And that will end the inning. But Greensboro's on the board thanks to a solo homer from Colin Fowler. It's one nothing Monarchs as we head to the fifth. Back here at First National Bank Field in downtown Greensboro. Bryson Beber is in to lead off the fifth inning for Carolina. And he swings at the first pitch and misses 0-1. Beber struck out looking his first time up. Oh one. It's in the dirt, 1-1 one one now. Not a bad pitch there on the breaking ball. Look, it had some 12-6 action to it. Eighty-two degrees here tonight in Greensboro as that misses inside two and one. Just past 7:45 here in the Gate City. It's a beautiful night for baseball. A great crowd and a great matchup from a great venue. No better spot to be tonight. Well, except maybe Truro Stadium. 2-1. Bever swings and misses once again, but he took a big cut at it, 2-2. Two two. Well, there are a couple of reasons why I'd rather be at Truro Stadium. First of all, what better place to be than the home of the Disco Turkeys? But secondly, Luis Robert making his rehab start for the Winston-Salem Dash tonight at Truist Stadium. Absolutely. 2-2 two -two pitch. Bever golfs it over to third, and Willen will make the throw on to Hairston for out number one. You said Luis Robert making his rehab appearance for the White Sox with the Winston-Salem Dash tonight. We think it's just for tonight. Eloy Jimenez spent the entire weekend last weekend in Winston-Salem. Another White Sox superstar. And Urban Mercedes, who you might have heard hinted at retirement yesterday, is back with the Charlotte Knights 
in the 704 and in uniform tonight. That misses what? up. That misses upstairs 1 and 0. That's news to me. He then deleted the post about 24 hours after he put it up. That's 2 and 0 to Haggard. And then posted a picture of himself in uniform in Uptown Charlotte tonight with the Knights. Wow, good for him. I was devastated when I saw that. 2-0. Now, Tony La Russa said he was going to reach out to him, and you know, part of me thought, yeah, we'll, we'll see how well that goes over. But uh, Apparently, it, apparently it went over pretty well. And Mercedes, in case you missed this story, I'll refresh you on it after this pitch to Haggard. In there, strike one as he was taken all the way. And Mercedes started the year as an absolute slugger for the White Sox, one of the favorites for AL Rookie of the Year. Broke one of the unwritten rules in baseball. Haggard fouls that one back, and it'll make it a full count. Yeah, he broke one of the unwritten rules in baseball, which is you don't swing 3-0 and in a blowout. And as old-fashioned as Tony La Russa is, he called him out on it, albeit and, too publicly. Uh, too publicly, well, and then Mercedes got demoted. Well, he just, he just completely lost his The funny thing was, that. before and after that game, Mercedes was hitting about 375 as that's fouled back towards us, a few rows below us. That would have been a lot scarier if we were over near where we started the evening. Correct. Good thing we moved, I guess. Anyways, prior to that game, Mercedes was hitting about 370-ish. After that, he hit just 176 with only two extra base hits and one RBI. 3-2. Haggard hammers it down the left field line. Foul into the parking lot. Please don't hit my car, Kaysen. We're parked right behind you, right in front of and behind each other. So take Brett's. Mine is older. That's a fair point. It's also got stickers on it you're not too fond of. 3-2 count. Here's the pitch. Misses high ball four, and it's a one-out walk from Kaysen Haggard. That might be the farthest ball I've seen him hit all summer. Tonight, I feel like he's seeing us the ball really as well is. as he has all season. He made solid contact on, that, on the uh, double into the gap out in left center and then missed a home run by a matter of keeping his hands back half a second longer. So in steps Usher now with one on and one out. Takes inside and it gets away from Bartley and that will allow Hagger to move to second base with one down. I still would score that a wild pitch even though Bartley tried his darndest to get a glove on it. Yeah, anytime you gotta completely pop up from the crouch and stand up for a ball, you can score it as a wild pitch in my book. One and oh the count to Usher. That was pitch 75 for McGonigal. Here comes 76. Inside, 2-0. And, oh. and if Usher can find a way to get on here and flip the lineup card over, there might be something brewing. There already is in left field. Ha, 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 ha. You're so funny. 2-0. Oh. Usher took a big rip at that one, but he didn't get it. Well, it's not Bud Light that's popular in Greensboro. It's uh, there's a some good local breweries here too. We won't name them, but two one is the count. Only two one, usher. Only one we care about is Foothills. Correct. That's what I was getting at. Sponsor of your starting lineups, which were delayed for us tonight. First time for everything. Every time we feel like we've crossed off everything off the bingo, on the bingo card. card this summer, something else pops up. Two one. Usher takes another big rip at it. He's behind the fastball again. Count even 2-2. Two -two. Two -two pitch. High ball three, and Bartley took a look down to second to make sure Hagger didn't have any ideas. Three-two pitch coming. 
On the inside corner, strike three. Another good frame from Bartley to get the call. And there's two down now. Man, oh man, that one was close. As That's close a tough pitch to take, be. too. And it's not a bad take either on the inner half. I mean, he's going to get jammed regardless, so. It's just a great spot all the way around for McGonigal. Still hitting spots, 80 pitches in. Dion Tubbs takes outside ball one. And Tubbs has lined out both of his first two trips to the plate. First time it was to center, last time to left. See if he can complete the trifecta with a line to right. How about an infield single? Harris did knock down a hard hit ball at first and an important play to do so as Haggard has to hold on at third. If that ball gets through, this game is tied. Willen was charging in right to make a play on it if it got through, but Haggard with two outs was running on contact and with his speed probably would have beaten that. But hit hard and Hairston doing his best Alex Nedeljkovic impression. Oh, come on. I know, sorry, that's a low blow. That's a sore, uh, that is a very fresh wound. Oh, they picked off Dion at first, are you kidding me? What a move from McGonagall. My goodness. Kirk Cabana's gonna come out and have a word. I don't know what good it's gonna do. Dion's still standing at first. In the same pose, I might add. Chase Jesse playing first base coach, still standing. For the moment, and we think it'll stay out number three, and it will. With that, we'll head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. We're halfway through this one in Greensboro. The Monarchs lead 1-0. Hey, Ostentation Nation, visit the Foul Territory Team Store today in order to grab all your favorite Carolina Disco Turkey merchandise to show your team spirit. You can visit the team store at Truist Stadium during our next two home games, which will be the final of the season on July 29th and 30th, or visit the Foul Territory Team Store at discoturkeys.com, where there are still home and away jerseys and limited player hats available for pre-order, along with a, still a great number of T-shirts, stickers, hats, snapbacks, whatever you need, we got it. And as you mentioned, that last homestand is not this upcoming weekend, but the next. Not even the weekend, truly, as the Disco Turkeys will use that weekend to prepare for the trip to Johnstown, Pennsylvania. It'll be a week from tonight will be the first of that two against the Locos, the final against the Race City Bootleggers, as that's popped back foul. And this one is a lot closer to us. In fact, right to our right. And it bounced off the ATM. Somebody check and make sure if it's okay. If it breaks open, I call dibs. <laughs> We're cutting the broadcast short and getting out of here. I'm sorry. <laughs> that pitch misses inside to Guy, one and one. 
I'll leave the camera here, the soundboard. Just give me a laptop. Just, and I'm just, going. just hang me out to dry. Yep, All right. Exactly. I you're, guess you're not the one that's taking anything. One one guy will ground it to third. Saint Laurent will make a spectacular sliding stop, but it'll ultimately be for not as it's a foul ball and strike two. Well, not exactly for not. For the highlight reel. For the highlight reel. It's for yeah. the people more than anything else. See what he can do is he can screen record that and then cut it and then you know oh I I lost the throw when I cut the highlight. No, what you got to do is you got to dub music over it and cut our voices out. I'll never I'll never suggest that again. But no. for Austin's purposes. Correct. One two. That misses inside and almost hit guy. Two and two. I like that he's pounding the inside corner against a speedy guy though. I mean, you're almost, in, you're almost enticing him to hit the ball on the ground. Two, two, that is well hit into the gap in left center. That's gonna get down. Dion gets over to cut it off. The throw to second is not gonna be in time on the relay and guys in with the leadoff double. Well, they made that relay play a lot closer than it looked. It was going to be Dion did a really good job to cut that off. Out in the gap in left center. And in steps Isaiah Rem now. Yep, and that's the third extra base hit for the Monarchs tonight. Two doubles and a home run. And only the fourth hit overall. Scout Nichols is stretching in the Carolina bullpen. and Out there with Chase Jesse as well. I believe those are the only two players left in the dugout except for Dane Stewart. Correct. Other than that, the dugout is empty. Or there's just guys behind stairs that we can't see from our current angle. Want to know the count to Ram? That's on the ground through the right side, base hit. Charging is Conklin. He bobbles it on the transfer. He won't get the throw off. Guy will score easily. And it's 2-0 Greensboro. That's a solid piece of hitting. Beber just knows that one's through the hole. Can't do anything about that one. You just got to shake it off, and you got to work on getting through this inning with no further damage. Conklin might have had a play, especially with the arm of a catcher out there. But rushed it a little bit, and Bartley swings and misses at that one for strike one. Sets are not afraid to come after one of the better bats in this lineup. Well, and you got to expect that from a natural catcher slash infielder that's playing in the outfield. Picking up a ball on the ground on the run and a quick transfer and throw is no easy feat. And Bartley, I believe, called time late. As Setzer had already started his motion. Before the 0-1, a check on Ram over at first. A one misses outside, count even now, one and one. <laughs> Sets her from the stretch with one in and nobody out and he'll step off. Another check over at first and a lot closer play than it looked initially. But Rem back in again safely. There's a good breaky ball right there. There's that wiffle ball type movement on the outside corner one and two. That misses inside and in the dirt. Bartley able to hop, skip, and jump out of the way, although he's claiming it hit him. 
And now we're going to have a conference with our two umpires this evening as if that indeed clipped Bartley on the foot. It looks like it might have. I couldn't tell definitively. And they are going to award him first base. So it's a hit by pitch. And now a pair of base runners on with still nobody out for Greensboro. And they might have something brewing here in their half of the fifth inning. With already a 2-0 lead. And Scout Nichols continues to warm up in the bullpen with Chase Jesse catching him. As we've seen, though, that could change as to who's on what end of what down there. That's in the dirt from Setzer, ball one, and not how you want to start off the A-B with two on behind you. And I tell you, I think the leash for Setzer needs to be incredibly short right now before this game gets out of hand. And Kirk Caban is on the top step of the dugout. Watching things pretty intently. And also keeping an eye on the bullpen down the right field line. That pitch misses in the dirt, and both runners are going to advance on what will ultimately be scored a wild pitch. So second and third now, still nobody out, and a 2-0 count to the cleanup man, Hairston, with Fowler, who went deep back in the third on deck. Back in the fourth, excuse me, to lead off the fourth, the first pitch of the fourth inning. 2-0. High and away, 3-0. This is trouble right here. This is a lot of trouble. The ball has made its way out from the Carolina bullpen for a brief stoppage now. I wonder if that's planned. you got to give Setzer a little bit of time to recover. Yeah, Maybe may, may strategic to Staged. some extent. It's a hoax. 3-0. In the dirt, ball four, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. And now Kirk Cabana is going to take that long walk out to the mound. So the double by Guy to lead off the inning. The RBI single from Rem, who now stands at third. Bartley hit by the pitch, stands at second now. And Hairston on the base on balls at first. And we'll see if Kirk Cabana does end up taking the baseball. Right now it looks to be just a run of the mill mound visit. I think you gotta make the switch here. First four guys in the inning have all reached. You got nobody out. He's not by doing, two. Nope, he's going to hang with him. And Kirk we trust. Trust the Kirk process. And now in steps Fowler, who, as we told you, Homer down into that Sunbrella section out in straightaway left field. They jam him inside and he swings and misses on it. Gets away from Usher momentarily, but he's able to pounce on it. And it's a big strike one. Homer down the left field line where I'd say the majority of the crowd is this evening. At the Bud Light Grandstand down there, the Sunbrella section that stretches out into the lawn out in straightaway left. Really, really good crowd here tonight, Graham. Yeah, this is comparable to what the disco turkeys pull in on a normal Thirsty Thursday. 0-1. Inside and in the dirt again. Clearly, they're trying to keep the ball in on him and prevent him from getting extended. Especially when he went yard his last time up. Yeah, but you got to be careful you don't walk in a run here at the same time. And now 1-1 one, one count. You can't get behind to a spot where you have to challenge him. 1-1. One, one. In the dirt again inside. 2-1. and one. Well, they got him to swing at that once. They've gone back in with that same pitch twice now. And he has spit on it both times. So now where does the approach go? You gotta just try to fill the zone. You can't try to place at this point. You're up around 90 pitches now. 
Went inside again. He fouled it off at the count even now, two and two. And now is when you go outside. Yep, you, you have ultimately set up for that. First four pitches on the inner half and further inside than the corner. You have to try to hit a corner on the outside part of the plate right here, right now. Be a good time for a 2-2 breaking ball. Try and backdoor it. Setzer shakes off once, now gets the sign, comes set, fastball inside and hit him, and that'll score a run. So that's Fowler's second RBI of the night. And this time he'll wear it to get it. Rem will score, Bartley to third, Hairston to second, and Fowler will take first, and it's 3-0 Greensboro. And that will do it for Hayden Setzer. So on comes Scout Nichols, and Greensboro holds a 5-0 lead with the bases still loaded and still nobody out in the fifth. Back here in downtown Greensboro. Burt Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck. The Monarchs have pushed across two in this half inning to extend their lead to three to nothing. After the home run by Fowler back in the fourth made it one nothing. The RBI single from Rem. I'll give you a rundown of how this inning has gone so far in case you're just joining us. Justin Guy doubled the lead it off, scored on an RBI single from Rem out into the, through the hole in the right side, out in the right field. Devin Bartley was then hit by a pitch. That loaded the bases, and then Colin Fowler was hit by a pitch. And now Scout Nichols will come on to face Eli Willen with the bases still loaded and still nobody out. Now Greensboro's got a chance to bust this thing wide open. First pitch from Scout in there, strike one. Really good spot right there up and in on the lefty. Willen pops it up. Shallow left down the line. St. Laurent over and it'll get out of play just over the wall down the line. Final line on Hayden Setzer. Four plus innings pitched. He faced 22 batters. Hit two batters. Gave up five hits. One error behind him. Five walks, but also five strikeouts. And three earned runs. And 93 pitches is the final. That's up there towards the most that he's thrown in an outing this year. So unable to get through the fifth to be qualified for a win should Carolina come back. 
Well, they didn't have the lead either, so. Well, yeah, that would nullify that. Good point. One and two is the count on Willen. I mean, a big first out if Scout can get it right here. Willen swings and misses on the changeup, strike three. Scout's pumped up and deservedly so as he gets a big out number one. And that's a situation in which you have to be pitching for a strikeout. Well, now you don't because you can go for the double play ball right here. And there's a force at any base, mind you. Still got corners in, middle infield double depth, no surprise. This is where it gets interesting. This could make or break this ball game right here. In steps the switch hitter, Alejandro Rodriguez, now batting from the left side against the right-hander, Nichols, who takes outside ball one. Rodriguez is the definition of a Swiss Army knife. Can play infield, can play outfield. He's a switch hitter. He can pitch. The only thing we haven't seen him do yet this year against Carolina or anybody is catch. Although he probably could. 1-0, down on the way, ball two. I don't know why you'd need him to catch. You got Devin Bartley on your squad. Very Jose Okendo-like. It's one of only four players in the history of Major League Baseball to play every position I in believe, a single season. I believe you're forgetting about Will Farrell. Correct. On the ground, up the middle, they got him at the plate. Scout Nichols with a fantastic bare hand play off the mound to flip to the plate and get the out. And the tag technically didn't even need to be made, but it was nonetheless. So Bartley's toast at the plate, and there are two down. And Scout Nichols, I don't want to jinx it, but man, oh man. Rodriguez will reach on the fielder's choice. The second time a 1-2 fielder's choice has taken place tonight. As that misses outside to Starbuck, 1-0. Starbuck out to deep right down the line. That's a fair ball. It's going to hop over the wall. Two runs are going to score. It's a ground rule double. A two run at that. 5 nothing Monarchs. That hurts. After you get two huge outs, get a ball down the left field line. I guess fortunately it hopped over the wall or else three might have scored, but nonetheless. Devin Tonkins is on to pinch hit. And we'll assume the designated hitter spot, we presume. It is. That is the designated hitter spot that McMillian was in. So Starbuck, the two-run ground rule double, puts him at second. And Rodriguez at third. 1-0 and is the count now to the pinch hitter, Tonkins. As a four-run fifth inning has broken this thing wide open. On the ground, foul, one and one. So now you can make that five earned runs on Hayden Setzer. So the book is closed on him as the two runners that scored are his responsibility. Rodriguez... And Starbuck, however, a Nichols responsibility. That's on the ground towards the whole right side. Sliding stop, throw to first on it. Four hops is not in time. And that's going to allow two runs to score. And it's seven nothing. Oh boy, I love the effort, but man, oh man. That's another play that's, it's close and it doesn't go your way. And the thing is, that's a hit. That, that is no error. No, that's a base hit all the way. And maybe, just maybe, if you don't make the throw, you keep the second run from scoring, but we'll go ahead and give Tonkins the two RBIs as Greensboro has officially batted around now. Justin Guy to the plate ahead of the count 0-1. 
settle the debate. If you bat around, is it 9 or 10 that come to the plate? Because this would be 10. Uh, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's 9. I think if the entire lineup makes it to the plate, then you bat it around, even if the ninth guy is out number 3. In my estimation, if you, one guy has to hit twice to officially bat around. Strike one to Guy. Tonkins at first. Seven nothing the score in favor of the Monarchs. After a six run bottom of the fifth. And Guy's hit by the pitch. So now the 11th man of the inning will come to the plate. With two down, it's Rem. First pitch to him is an off-speed pitch that swung on and missed 0-1. And you got to nip this one in the bud as you come up on the 10-run rule. 0-1 the count to Rem from Nichols in the dirt 1-1. One one. As you said, yeah, that's important. If it gets to that point before the seventh, or even in the seventh, I believe it's the sixth. It could be. If you're up 10 in the bottom of the sixth, I think that might be it. Ram pops it up, shallow left center. That is gonna drop in front of everybody. And the bases are loaded. As Davis fires a rocket in behind the plate as it fell in between he and Smith. And it's gone from bad to worse this half inning as the 12th man of the inning will come to plate in the form of not ironically, number 12, Devin Bartley. And we've seen Devin Bartley come in, come through in big spots for Greensboro many a time this year. This one not quite as big, but it feels like it is. Carolina is trying to win consecutive games for only the second time this year. Technically they have, but the game in Mount Airy yesterday, just an exhibition. First pitch to Bartley on the ground is short. Smith up with it, throw to second, in time. A hard slide though. But that will end the inning. Not before Greensboro pushes across six runs to take a seven nothing lead in the Gate City.
Back here in downtown Greensboro. Carolina will try and mount a comeback now as Kicks Farrell will step in to lead things off for him. And they're half of the sixth inning after a six run, bottom half of the fifth in favor of the Monarchs at seven nothing. McGonagall back on the mound and threw up and in on Kicks Farrell again. Keep your eyes on that one. One to know the count. Farrell takes a big rip at that one, but didn't get it as McGonagall found the strike zone that time, one and one. One, one. Farrell takes high and in, two and one. That's a great pitch though, really good spot. Two one on the way. Farrell in the air out to left. Playable though for Rodriguez who settles under it for out number one. Man off the bat sounded like he got a hold of that one. Couple of times tonight that's happened. No such luck though. St. Laurent will pop that one up and out of play up on top of the sky boxes behind the first base dugout. Oh, one. Breaking ball that spun up one and one. Greensboro leads it 7 0. This will be pitch number 89 for McGonagall right here. High, 2 and 1. And you wonder how much longer they go with them. There is action down the left field line in the Greensboro bullpen. We'll get a number for you as soon as we can. 2 1. Upstairs, 3 and 1. Be a good fire starter here if St. Laurent can reach with a walk as a ball has escaped from the Greensboro bullpen. Three and one the count, here it comes. Up and in ball four and it's a one out walk to St. Laurent and maybe that's the fire starter. Man, one can hope, can't they? In steps Logan Conklin now. Pick off to first and St. Laurent back in time. Dane Stewart has worked his way into the on-deck circle to hit for Jeffrey Davis' spot and assuming he would take over and left. Conklin is able to lean out of the way of that one for ball one. And now out comes Bartley to have a chat with McGonagall. Conklin one for two, or excuse me, 0 for one on the day with a walk and a strikeout. one -oh to Logan on the way. Big rip at that one and he fouls it back, one and one. This 
about 8.30 here in downtown Greensboro. It's 78 degrees as it continues to cool off on a beautiful night for baseball here in the downtown of the Gate City. 1-1. Inside, 2-1. Conklin had to spin out of the way of that one as well. McGonigal will be at 95 pitches following this offering. 2-1 is on the inside corner, 2-2. Two and two. Time for Conklin to battle here. 2-2 two, two coming. Well hit down the right field line, but it'll hook out to play foul over the playground area. over towards the First National Bank building, conveniently located right next to First National Bank Field. And one might mistake it for being conjoined. It is not. Conklin takes strike three called on the outside corner, and there's one down, or two down, excuse me. Second time Conklin's gone down on strikes tonight. One swinging and then that one looking as Dane Stewart will be the last hope for a rally here in the sixth inning. So Jeff Davis officially done on the night, 0 for 2, with a strikeout and a pop-up, unable to... Keep the home run streak going. Yep, exactly. First pitch to Dane Stewart, misses upstairs, ball one. Be big for Greensboro if McGonigal can get through six. This will be pitch number 98 right here. Right down the pipe, one and one. A good velo on that as well. One and one to Dane. Down and in, two and one, as a ball has made its way out of the Greensboro bullpen. Two one coming to Dane Stewart. Inside corner called strike two. Big two two pitch right here. Let's go, Dane. Come on now, be a rally right here. Carolina needs it. Two two. Breaky ball called strike three inside corner side retired. St. Laurent stranded on first, and it's 7-0 Greensboro through five and a half here from First National Bank Field.
back here at First National Bank Field in Greensboro. Brett Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck. Isaiah Hairston steps in to lead things off here in the Greensboro half of the sixth inning. Scout Nichols back to the mound for his second inning of work. And first pitch to Hairston misses, ball one. Hairston hits it well out to deep right. Back goes Stort looking up, it is gone. To the left of the video board. Isaiah Hairston got all of that one and that makes it eight nothing now. It goes from bad to worse for Carolina. Just like that, the lead extended. Third run earned now for Nichols. There's gonna be second run earned now for Nichols. And the other guy with a home run on the ledger tonight is Fowler, who takes ball one inside. Fowler hard hit on the ground to second, fielded cleanly by Haggard in the throw on for the out. Well, I told you in the pregame that one of the big keys for this one was going to be the long ball. I thought it might be in favor of Carolina, but clearly that one's going the way of the Monarchs tonight with two big flies already, and this one's still in the sixth only. Nick McAdon and Chase Jesse have made their way out to the Carolina bullpen as the first pitch to Willen misses down and in ball one. McAdon is catching Jesse. So it would appear Jesse would be the guy to come in next. But again, as we told you, that can change. Willen hard hit on the ground to second. Haggard's getting work in over there. He'll field and throw cleanly on to first for out number two. And when you say over there specifically, he's having to put in work ranging to his left. And as a second baseman, that's, that's a, a tough really play. tough play. Anytime you have to range to that three, four hole, because not only do you have to get there. You gotta make a throw you, pretty much across your body. Yeah, exactly. You've gotta make that sharp turn. It's a tough play and Kaysen Haggard has, save for the one tough infield single from Starbuck, or from uh, Tonkins, I should say. He's been masterful over there at the four hole. Alejandro Rodriguez stands in now. With two down. As he's ahead in the count now, two and oh. Two oh inside, three and oh now. Nichols trying to avoid a two-out walk. Here comes the 3-0 offering. Rodriguez hammers it down the right field line. Fair ball and into the Carolina bullpen. Having to go over there and chase it down in the midst of Jesse's warm-up is Stewart, and he does a great job to do so and get it in before Rodriguez could get to third. You know, you would think that with somebody warming up down there, once it got to the bullpen, they'd blow it dead, but maybe not. No, you play the field, and it's a, it's a double one way or the other. Exactly. Two-out double for Rodriguez. On a 3-0 green light, nonetheless. Well, he got a cookie, and he didn't miss it. Here's Starbuck now as he hits that well out to right field, but right at Dane Stewart for out number three. But Greensboro pushes across one more on the solo shot from Isaiah Hairston. It's 8-0 after six.
Back here at First National Bank Field in downtown Greensboro. Brett Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck. And Patty McGonigal has made his way back out to the mound. Caleb Smith will lead things off for Carolina. And their half of the seventh. Looking to get a rally started down eight. Pitch number 102 from McGonigal is inside ball one. Smith fouls that one straight back to the screen off the top of the screen, I have actually. I've never seen I that. I don't think before. I've ever seen that either. That is precision. That's a first. That is a first right there. Jeremiah Foster is warming up in the Greensboro bullpen as Smith laces one up the middle. That's a leadoff single. So first, Smith goes Bardownski. Oh, the you, foul net. I'm going to say, as awful as that sounds, that is spot on hockey terminology That's for what exactly just happened. That's exactly what he did. And then laces one back. I want to roast you for it, but I can't because I'm mad I didn't think of it first. <laughs> I don't hate it. I'm just mad I didn't think of it first. Pitch misses up and into Bever 1 0. It's now 106 for McGonagall. And Foster's warm up seems to be speeding up a bit down there. Misses in the dirt, 2 0 now to Bever. As he might be starting to run low on fumes. I'd like to see the old Kobe Van Bogart right here. Just throw the ephus when you're getting up there in the pitch count. <laughs> He was in the press box for a lot of the pregame in Martinsville. Good to chat with him. Uh, as I told you on the broadcast Tuesday night, he and uh, Chase Lockler played together growing up in Alabama as that one's popped up. Out into shallow right. Fowler over to make the play one out. Now Van Bogart and Lockler played together in Alabama growing up in the same town from the time they were six years old to the time both left for college. Wow. Lockler had a, had a good deal to say to me about that as we uh, shot the ball around the infield of Martinsville Speedway. 1-on-1 one -on -one out for Case and Haggard now. And Haggard fouls that one straight back up into the skyboxes and now down into the crowd behind home plate here. We've seen some pretty awkward ricochets on foul balls here. Yeah, that's one way to put it. How else would I put it? Pitch to Haggard, misses up and in, one and one. From the beautiful home in the Greensboro Grasshoppers to score, not to Carolina's liking though thus far. One on one out though for Haggard who does have an extra base hit on the night. That misses up and in, or up and away rather, two and one. Smith holds serve at first. Haggard ahead in the count, two one. Instead of throw over, Usher on deck. This just in, we have word from fan favorite game day operations staff, Brian Coleman, on his take on the Nelson Cruz trade. We'll Give it to that. us. We'll get you that in the bottom of the seventh. Don't want to spoil things here. 2-1 to Haggard. Big swing and a miss at that one. He didn't get it, though. 2-2. Two two. I am waiting with... teaser. I am waiting with bated breath. Hayden Setzer's making his way out to the first base coach's box to assume those duties. It's a 2-2 count on Haggard as he'll choke up on the bat and take high and away, ball three. 
McGonigal pounds his chest saying, my bad, on pitch number 113. The most that we've seen in a game for either the Disco Turkeys or their opponents this year was 124 from Ben Tanman against the Martinsville Ponies on June 4th. Haggard, did he check his swing? Yes, he did. It's ball four, and it's first and second now. That's going to do it. And yep, Pella Stokes is going to make the long walk out to give him the hook. It'll bring Usher to the plate. So 114 pitches of scoreless baseball from Patty McGonigal, and he'll get some pats on the back when he gets back to the dugout. But Carolina looking to start a rally when Usher comes to the plate after this. Back here at First National Bank Field in downtown Greensboro. Brett Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck. The Disco Turkeys trailing this one to the Greensboro Monarchs 8-0. As Jeremiah Foster has assumed duties on the mound after 114 pitches of scoreless baseball from Patty McGonigal. And from what we've seen, probably his best outing of the year. Oh, no doubt about it. And put the Disco Turkeys in a tough spot. But here's the good news. Now you got to the bullpen. The problem is, what are you going to do you, with it now? You have got to at least push one across here, at least to I mean, hold you're, safe you're from the run rule. You're down eight. You got to. First pitch to Usher misses up and away. Ball one from Foster, the hard throwing right hander, who we saw start against Carolina a couple of matchups ago. Usher takes a big rip at the fastball, but he didn't get it one and one. A big hit right here from Patrick, up and away, two and one. He's no stranger to it. And that roller coaster game in Boone, Usher had the go ahead hit in the top half of the ninth which was his first as a disco turkey, mind you. 2-1. Fouls that one back, 2-2. Two and two. Good cut, though. Deion Tubbs on deck as ushers the nine-hole hitter. Be big if you can flip the lineup card over right here. 2-2 two and two the count. On the ground to third, foul. Would have been a force play at third. Would that have been in fair territory? 
and as slowly as that was hit, almost could assuredly been, an out. Could have been two or three. As slowly well, as that would hit, it, you, get, you almost guarantee one, maybe two, but... 2-2, two, two, swung on and missed. And that's out number two. Big time breaking ball that time from Foster. Got Usher to whiff. Second strikeout of the game for Usher, the first one of the swinging variety. Now to bring up Tubbs. Tubbs takes up and away, ball one. Well, the lineup card has flipped over, but with two down, it makes the job a little bit tougher. Dion up the middle. Going to be a force play at seconds as it's fielded by a rim and a step on the bag for the out to retire the side. It's stretch time in the Gate City. The Greensboro Monarchs lead the Carolina Disco Turkeys 8-0. Back here in downtown Greensboro, Brett Wiseman alongside Graham Tuck. Disco Turkeys trail at 8-0. And the third pitcher of the night for Carolina, that's the big lefty, Chase Jesse. Yep, and the final line for Scout Nichols. You can officially close the book on him through two innings of work and 26 pitches. 11 batters faced, five hits surrendered, three runs, all of them earned, no walks and a strikeout. And as mentioned, we do have the take of Brian Coleman on the Nelson Cruz trade. He's a huge fan of it, although they gave up a good young prospect in Joe Ryan. I would say two good young prospects. That's two top 20 prospects in your system. He says they have a small window, and he brings major power to the offense. Well, see, this is what I was telling you when that news dropped pregame, or the trade was being finalized pregame, that... The big reason you do that was you look at Tampa Bay, their best DH is G-Man Choi, he's a left-handed hitter. You go and get somebody like Nelson Cruz with a proven DH, you start him against lefties, that makes your lineup even deeper. Like I said, that, that's a depth move, and that's one of the best power hitters in baseball right now, consistently. So, you got to give up a lot to young. get him. But here's the other thing, looking at Minnesota's aspect of things. You get two top pitching prospects back, that means the clock's ticking on Jose Barrios as the ace before we get to the deadline in eight days now. This is a big couple of weeks in sports. The NHL draft tomorrow night. Expansion draft last night. The NHL schedule released tonight. The ESPN NBA draft is next week, a week from tonight. That it is. What's 
the NBA draft, but it's more of, okay, you can tune in after pick one. Fair enough. Just as it was with the NFL draft. The NHL entry oh, draft tomorrow is, night back on ESPN as well. This is nowhere near as much of a surefire pick as Trevor Lawrence was. No. Still pick trades that can happen as well, but yeah, as we said, the NHL revealed their schedule during Sports Center tonight, so cue the theme music. It's really back, believe it or not. Opening night on ESPN is October 12th. Pittsburgh at Tampa, Seattle at Vegas, and then TNT will have their first doubleheader the following night, ever. Back to baseball, though. Chase Jesse on the mound, pours in strike one to Devin Tompkins to lead off the bottom half of the seventh. And, Ch and Jesse, in that game that he played in against the High Toms, had a really rough go of things this Monday. The High Toms batted around in both the first and second innings. And in the first inning, they had gotten all the way through to the top of the order the second time without a hit being recorded. Jesse walked the first four batters of the games. Good to see him filling up the zone here. Two and two is the count now. Is that high V low fastball misses up and away? I do have experience in hitting off Chase Jesse. Tuesday night. Hitting or do you mean swinging and missing? S swinging and missing, yes. Tuesday afternoon in the infield of Martinsville Speedway. The blitz balls were brought out and uh, those things move three times as much as regular wiffle balls. I mean, they're, they're literal plastic cheat codes. That misses outside, ball four. It's a leadoff walk to Tonkins to flip the lineup card over to Justin Guy. As two runs here in this half inning would end it for Greensboro. Yep, that is the case. So if Carolina wants to get this thing to the top half of the eighth, they cannot allow more than one. So Tonkins represents the winning run right now. Eight nothing the score as that's fouled back into the skybox is strike one. Oh, one from Jesse to Guy. Good breaky ball out or half, but he didn't get the call. One and one. Tompkins takes his lead off first. Jesse keeping a close eye on him. Here comes the one one outside. Two and one. Two and one, the count. Guy, one for two in the ball game with the double that got that six run fifth inning started. And this one's popped up. Right side, haggard under it to make the catch for the first out. And that will bring up Isaiah Rem with one on and one out after the pop out. Rem has reached base. Every time he's come up to the plate, he walked in the first, reached on an error in the third, and he had two singles in the fifth inning. Yes, you heard me correctly. Both two singles in the, the inning, correct. One RBI and one run scored on the day to go along with a stolen base. First pitch to him is a breaking ball that he had to bend out of the way of. 1-0. Oh. That one came up in his kitchen. one oh two and misses outside. 2-0 oh now.
Again, Carolina cannot allow more than one across this half inning. They've allowed at least one in each of the last three, including six in the fifth. First three were scoreless since, not so much. Jesse trying to change that as it's fouled back by Ram, two and one now. As Freddie Mercury serenades the crowd here at First National Bank Field. Jesse into the stretch and gets the sign he wants now. Check on the runner once and twice. Make that three times and he'll step off. Actually, I believe time was called at the play by Rem. Nonetheless, we'll have to wait a little longer for the 2-1 offering. Here comes the 2-1, look out, breaking ball behind Rem, three and one. As he had to duck and cover. Here comes the three one from Jesse. Outside ball four, a two on, one out, with Bartley coming up. Mm, that is not the not guy ideal. coming up, to say the least. So Rem represents the winning run at first. First pitch to Bartley, swung on and missed, strike one. Big spot for Jesse right here to rebound after that poor game on Monday that we talked about. Good chance to do it too. Winning run on first. Got two outs to work with, you gotta make something happen. Oh one, one in the dirt, count even now, 1-1. One, one. We've now passed nine o'clock here in downtown Greensboro. Bartley swings and misses on a pitch that had him tied up, one and two. That's not something you don't see every day. Do not see him chase often, but that one, as I said, it, it legitimately tied him up. One, two to Bartley. Just missed the outside corner, two and two. It's a great spot though, and a really, really good pitch. You gotta hit that spot, and he did. Just didn't, he didn't get, the, get call. the call. You said but it. More importantly, you didn't get him to chase, especially after, after getting him chased on the previous pitch. Took the words out of my mouth. Jesse set in the stretch, the two, two on the way. Is a breaking ball. That one definitely missed high, and he knows he could have gotten more bite on it. 3 2. You could see the reaction there. The hopping up and down. He knows he missed it. He was trying to get that back door again. He got the corner. It was just high. Now the count full. Bartley swings and misses on it for strike three as Jesse blows the fastball by him for a big out number two. And big is exactly the right word to describe that spot. You got your best against their best. And a full count, something's got to budge, and it wasn't Jesse. He had to come after him, and he got away with it. But here's a guy who homered his last time up out in the right field. That was Isaiah Hairston. If he does the same right here, the game would be over. Jesse throws in the dirt, ball one outside. 
Colin Fowler, the other Monarch with a home run to his credit tonight on deck if Hairston can reach. A double is going to win this game for Greensboro. They don't need one over the wall. Exactly. Because Isaiah Rem is on first. Correct. Speed on both bases. Big time breaking ball that broke right back over the front door, one and one. One and one the count. Here it comes. On the inside corner, strike two. Great pitch. Big one-two pitch coming here. On the way. In the dirt. Count even now, 2-2. Two -two. Jesse absolutely has to get out of this. Two, two. Hairston on the ground and into foul territory to the right of first base and he'll stay alive. And it's not a get out of it and for convenience's sake, it's a as goodness, our home plate umpires firing darts back to the pitcher. <laughs> Uh, we touched on that earlier. Some velo from the guy in blue behind the plate. And I'm did not you, talking about that. That looked like Usher. it had cutting action on it, too. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That had some out. movement. Nonetheless. I told you, Co Coach Cabana, he's putting his resume out there. It's not out of convenience anymore. It's out of necessity. He's got to get out of this and keep the game alive. 2-2. Two -two. Hairston pops it up. Left side, St. Laurent will give it a look, but it's about 10 rows deep and up into the sky boxes. Two and two. As Chase Jesse will take his time behind the mound getting reset. Check on the runner at second, 2-2 two -two pitch. Breaking ball up and in that misses and gets to the backstop and everybody moves up 90 feet, which means the winning run is now at second. In scoring position, oh boy. And who would be on deck but Colin Fowler? Of course. Fowler's one for two on the night. One for three. One for three, excuse me, with two RBIs. An RBI on the hit by pitch and the solo shot in the fourth. Also grounded out and struck out. Three, two. Hairston in the air out to left. Over to slide and make the play unable to, though. It looked like Conklin has moved over into left field he now. Did. And that was a great play from Conklin to get into that slide over there on the line because worst case scenario, you knock it you down. You knock it down. Sliding is a much better situation than diving in that Because if you dive it and it gets past you, it's, that's it. But it was foul. We neglected to mention that, the most important aspect of it. It's still three and two. That's on the ground, up the middle, base hit. Here comes Guy, excuse me, Tonkins. Here comes Rem. That's the ball game. We got some words. And Chase Jesse was barking at somebody. But that is the ball game. Greensboro takes this one 10 nothing.
in seven innings as they win on the 10 run rule. That'll do it for us here in downtown Greensboro. A pleasure to call this one for you from a beautiful location. The result not to Carolina's liking, unfortunately, but they'll be back in action with us Saturday from Statesville against the Owls. We'll have that for you here on the Carolina Disco Turkey YouTube. Until then, for all our terrific game day staff and everybody involved with the ball club, for Graham Tuck, Brett Wise.